Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video on this channel and yes, it is happening again. Views reactivity system is getting less memory intensive and faster. Again. Let's see how it works and who's the master behind it. So let's get started. Here we go. Yes, you heard correctly. Views reactivity system is once again getting faster. And you might wonder, wait, didn't that happen like a couple minor versions ago? Yes, correctly. The reactivity system got like improvements, being it like less memory consumption or just like better speed consistently throughout the last minor versions. And this time, it once again started from a totally different angle. Johnson Chu, the author of Voler, which is the library that powers view language tools and various other language tools around the ecosystem of web development, thought about, okay, I want to improve the code generation performance of the view language tools, which is great for all our IDEs, right? So I thought, hey, why not implementing a new Cygnus library for a week or so? And somehow it ended up being four times faster than the Cygnus library that the view language tools have used before, which is, I think, the view reactivity system straight away. And now you might wonder, wait, uh, that's like just randomly popping out of nowhere? Well, not exactly. Johnson had quite some experience with that before. Already in May 2022, he started improving that uh, computed values don't need to trigger new dependencies when the value doesn't change, that multiple computed only triggers one effect, and so on, so on. So that already started improving a lot of things. And there was even more. In the same PR, also the scheduling logic was improved, leading to a 250 to 450% improvement, which means 2.5 to 4.5 times that fast. That all eventually got merged in Vue 3.4. So since then, Johnson's improvements already, well, are into all our new V applications, right? If you've upgraded so far, but probably you did. So of course he gathered some experience with signals and with reactivity systems. So it, in a way it makes sense to say, hey, let's implement a, a, new, a new system. So now you might wonder, what's the difference? We was using a push-based reactivity system for a while, which means that, okay, there's dependency, it updates and it pushes the changes straight away to the subscribers then switching to a preact inspired doubly linkedless data structure, which is more of a pull-based system. So then you have basically observers that ensure, okay, I'm subscribed to dependencies and then I change on demand. That helped a lot with, well, improvements in general in terms of speed, memory usage, and so on, so on. It's also getting quite a significant performance increase there, but that's not the end because Johnson decided to research not a pull-based and not a push-based, but a push-pull-based reactivity system. He then released that package as a package called Native Signals, which, well, caused a little trouble in the web community because some people were like, ah, oh, it's not a native implementation, the name is not really correct. So, well, after people saying, oh, that's not good for the ecosystem, even though this is the fastest library out there right now, the whole name changed from Native Signals to Alien Signals and was transferred to the StackBlitz organization who are also sponsoring uh, Johnson Chu here and helping him, well, doing open source. So we have the Alien Signals repository here and the package is a version 0.2.2 at the time of recording and it's still on preview in a way, but yeah, it is based on push-pull. It has some more logic constraints just to make sure that things are super fast and this is all research driven. So now you might wonder, okay, um, why doing it as a separate package and not straight away in there? Well, first of all, to show that this is independent of any kind of framework, right? So that's pretty helpful. And of course, to just, well, try it out and maybe make the ecosystem as a whole better because everything that's happening inside Alien Signals could be ported to other frameworks and um, other activity systems as well if they adhere with the constraints. And now you might wonder, okay, how does this look performance-wise? And very often we refer to SolidJS as one of the fastest implementation when it comes to signals. And Johnson did so here too. So there were various benchmarks, repository for these benchmarks also included with the PR of Johnson to this repository to make sure Alien Signals is added there. Back then at Johnson code HK slash signals, which is now Alien Signals over here, right? And of course, in this case, lower is better and solid performs pretty well. Though, well, Johnson's library does a little bit better in almost all the scenarios. Well, there are some libraries and they're not shown in that chart, but in other charts that I've linked below that might perform better in certain microscopic benchmarks. Also, that's important. This is, these are just micro benchmarks, right? Of different performance scenarios. But in all cases, except maybe that one over here, Johnson's library is extremely fast based on this push-pull approach. 
So with these results, you might wonder, hey, that's amazing. We have an external library that's super fast, especially for our view language tools, it's straight away usable, right? That was also another reason why there was a separate library. So that can be used in other projects as mentioned before. But now you might wonder, how does this translate to Vue.js? So of course, Vue is unlikely to depend on that library. So probably the changes and the concepts are just moved over to Vue.js. And luckily there's a PR, it's not merged yet. So there can still be things changing, which means even further improvements, but the numbers there are quite clear. So let's have a look. And here's the set PR from Johnson, which was created last week. And it does report some quite interesting findings because first of all, the memory usage is reduced by 13%. So 2.3 megabyte to two megabyte, which is pretty decent, especially for larger applications, right? And there, once again, the important disclaimer, the benchmark is especially important if you have like thousands of refs, the framework is rarely the bottleneck, right? So it's often API calls and so on and so on, but especially with data visualization, that's a bigger part. Or like having thousands of records you want to show, no doubt here, right? Especially for bigger applications, that's a really big benefit. And talking about bigger applications, even proportional to scale, we get an over 30x performance improvement by switching from a pull-based model to a push-pull model there. And if you want to take the actual results, they are here in the PR, but I also thought, why not running that on my own machine and see what the results there would be, just to make sure that they are not only comparable, but also having another set of data, right? So why not? And this was done in the view repository, comparing the main branch with the Aon Signals branch uh, that is from the PR, and you have the results. So what happened is that beforehand, I just generate the numbers for the vtest benchmark through the main branch for all these tests that are out there already, then do the same for the AN signals branch and eventually compare the numbers. And there are these different scenarios like, okay, creating a computed, write a ref, don't read computed with effect, without effect, and so on, so on. It's more interesting, of course, down here with like thousands of refs, of course. And still we see constant improvements on the right side. You have the baseline down here, but eventually we get from a 1.03x improvement, which is not that big, overall to 3.77x. And that's of course a huge improvement, right? Almost 4x compared to the current reactivity system, which is already fast. So what does that mean in the end? Well, for everyone building a simple landing page, probably not too much. For everything with bigger applications, especially with having like thousands of refs, that's a huge thing, right? If they load 4x as fast by just at some point updating the dependency, Likely this will come with view 3.6 and that might not be the end of the improvements. That's amazing. But also if we take a back step from the view ecosystem, that also can benefit everyone out there. A bit like Preact inspired the view uh, pool based system in the past when Evan migrated it over in February, this push pull system could also have other libraries to get the same amount of performance, improving maybe frameworks like Angular, Solid and so on and so on. So I'm curious if that research based approach of Aeon signals will also be ported over to other frameworks and we see that kind of performance gain there too. All in all, a super interesting topic. If you want me to dive deeper into how the Aeon signals thing work, how the reactivity system works, maybe with a little code deep dive, write it in the comments if you're interested because it's very technical and takes a bit more time. I thought if you're interested, I'll do another video on that. So let me know. Um, other than that, check out latest Deja View episode where Michael Thies and I talk about data fetching in Vue. And other than that, I uh, hope you have a wonderful day or weekend and uh, see you either in the last videos or in the next video. Happy hacking.